Hi everybody, my name's Dee Dee. Welcome to my big tidy up. I'm happy you're here today. Today, we're going to be tackling some of those hidden, dirty, little secrets we all have in our homes. You know, the places that need cleaned, but we don't see them all the time, so they're kind of out of sight, out of mind. Well, we're gonna tackle some of those today and get those taken care of. So let's jump right into it and let's get tidy. Today's first hidden dirty little secret, you can find it in the refrigerator and that's underneath your meat and vegetable storage drawers. I could not believe how terrible they were when I went down there and started cleaning. There was stuff that had obviously fallen from the top of the refrigerator and collected at the bottom. So I knew this wasn't gonna be an easy job because this stuff had been down here for a while, I think. This was going to be a bit of a challenge especially the angle and where this lid doesn't easily come off i was going to have to work around it so i just used my jaws kitchen cleaner to get it started and just gave it a good scrubbing I love cleaning products and gizmos, and this Bissell Steam Shot is my latest find. I absolutely love this little thing. I use it for everything to clean anything that has a nook or a cranny in it. It was great for this job to loosen everything up. You could use it to steam clothes. You can use it on your shower door tracks that get so dirty, window seals. I am a huge fan. I got it from Amazon. It wasn't super expensive and I am using it for so many things. I started by using a knife to get in those little corners to try to get everything out, but it worked much better when I took a wet kitchen rag and wrapped it around the knife because then as I was loosening everything up, it would stick to the rag and made it so much easier to pull everything out. As I'm cleaning this, I realize what the culprit is that has made all this mess. It is spilt juice that has fallen and dripped all the way down, collected, and it became like syrup. So everything that dropped stuck to it just like glue. I know this project is taking a long time on this video. It took a long time when I was doing it too. <laughs>
Well, the bottom of my fridge is no longer a dirty little secret, but what's next? Well, hidden behind this door, another little dirty secret, and that's the filters in the heating and cooling system. I have a terrible time remembering to change these, so I've come up with a few little tips that at least help me remember, and maybe they'll help you remember and keep track of when you change your filters as well. One thing that helps me is to always have extra filters on hand. I never purchase just one. I always purchase two or three and keep them nearby, so I'm always ready to change when it's time. Now, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I have dated the previous filter. I always take a Sharpie marker and I mark the date that I changed the filter. It helps me to remember when it's time to change it again, and they say I think about every three to four months you need to change your filters. And worst case scenario, let's say that my unit starts to act up and I have to call a heating or cooling company to come and repair my unit. At least if they ask me, when's the last time you changed your filter, I'll know and I'll be able to tell them. Mission accomplished. Off to the next dirty secret. I have to admit, I hate cleaning my ceiling fans. It's one of my least favorite things to do, so therefore it doesn't get done very often. So when I do get around to it, they're usually quite a mess. I know we all have our own way to clean a ceiling fan. I know there's some cool little brooms and dusters out there that are really neat. I clean mine kind of the old school, old fashioned way, the way my mother taught me. And the way I do it is I take a sock and dampen the sock, put it over my hand, and then I take a pillowcase that's dampened as well, and I use that and slide the ceiling fan blade inside the pillowcase as I am cleaning it so that anything that falls off goes right into that damp pillowcase. And because it's damp, the dust doesn't fly. It just falls in and sticks to the pillowcase. And it seems like I have less cleanup when I use this method. Ceiling fans done but I know that's not the only thing waiting for me. The next dirty little secret is the microwave. And not only is this a dirty little secret, this may be a mystery as well, because I do not understand how we can live in this home, have a cover that goes over each plate or bowl every time we use it, but we still end up with a mess in this microwave. Throughout the years, I've learned a lot of different methods to cleaning a microwave, but the very best methods that I've ever tried have always had one thing in common, and that's using steam. If you guys have any other ways, I would love for you to drop me a comment and share. I know the best way to clean a microwave is to never get it dirty, but since that isn't an option, here's what I use. I take a cup of water, add some lemon juice, and then I put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes until it starts to bubble up. And then I keep that door shut so that that steam stays in there and it kind of softens anything that might be stuck in the microwave. I've heard of people using vanilla as well. If anybody's used vanilla, would you drop me a line and let me know how it works? I would imagine it would make it smell real good, especially around the holiday time. After a few minutes and all the steam was gone, I just went ahead and went in with a kitchen cleaner and just wiped it out. And to finish it up, I just went over it with some stainless steel polish. I've been kind of on a stainless steel polish kick lately.
Microwave done. Too bad it can't stay like this forever. Another dirty little secret, it's the trays that go underneath the house plants that collect the water and the dirt that drains through. Well, I'm not real good about cleaning those, so I'm gonna take care of that today. I'm gonna clean these plant trays just by using a little bit of dish soap and a little light scrubbing, and then I'm gonna spray them again and let them soak for a while, and I'll come back to them. Well, these plant trays have little tiny grooves, so any excuse to use my Bissell steam shot. Good as new but I still have one more dirty secret waiting. Today's last little dirty secret, that's right, it's the baseboards. I don't know about you, but I do not like doing them at all, and they're usually last on my list in my home as well. But one thing I found that helps me keep them a little bit under control is using a Clorox wipe to clean the baseboard and then going afterwards and using a fabric softener sheet. Now these are just some Costco fabric softener sheets, but you can use any kind of fabric softener sheet that you like. I know it sounds crazy to use a fabric softener sheet on your baseboard, but it really does help control the static and the dust will not cling to the baseboard near as much after you go over it with a fabric softener sheet. And it helps your room smell good when you're all done. I actually do this same trick with my window framing as well. Clorox wipe and then go over with the fabric softener sheet. I really think it's like an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. When I do this two-step method, then I don't have to do it as often. Well, Tidy Uppers, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and my dirty little secrets. If you like this type of video, I would love it if you drop me a comment below. Let me know so I'll know to make this style of video again sometime. Well, I appreciate you stopping by. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out and it doesn't cost a thing. So until I see you again, stay tidy.